so we're done with section number one let's continue section number two which is reactor sizing now what's reactor sizing is essentially uh, calculate the size needed for a certain reaction or process to achieve certain conversion so generally you choose or set conversion probably you want the highest let's say 100% if it's possible or maybe the most convenient one is 20% given I don't know operation cost temperature impossible to achieve or a catalyst is way cheaper whatever you choose the conversion you want and once you choose the conversion you size your reactor so one thing here is the, the bigger the size or the bigger the reactor gets the higher the price so that's one other thing for example you want 90% conversion maybe you got I don't know 100 cubic meters and you want to change this to 99 maybe I don't know it's not linear you will need 10,000 cubic meters just to improve 9% well I think it's not worth it so you're probably going to stick with this okay now let's continue with the continuous tier tank reactor we're going to see only two CSTR which are the two most classic and the PFR the continuous tier tank reactor which thank god it's a uh, arithmetic not a differential or integral form and we got the PFR actually this is more like a tube but you get me uh, let's see CSTR uh, the sizing implies calculation of volumes of course sizing means size normally you calculate the volume given the conversion and the flow conditions and the rate of reaction or type of reaction and with this volume you go to typical uh, ways to choose is diameter to height or uh, those type of uh, ratios so you choose a diameter and you choose a height if you're doing a tank or a length if you're doing a pipe uh, we're not going to do that in this course but just to let you know uh, it's normal that a chemical engineer do that so I think this is in a chemical plant design you're going to see those heuristics or those values or rules or thumb rules to get the size of the reactor. Now for the continuous tier tank reactor the volume is represented in a graph or let's say in a conversion here and a rate of reaction here of course multiplied by flow it's by a rectangle so you get this you get this and the area here this area in the graph is my volume so it sounds kind of crazy say that the volume is actually the area you will say no the area you need to still multiply it by a height to convert it into volume but we're talking about this concept here we're going to see it later so just uh, trust in me and trust that that rectangle is that area is the volume or the total volume needed so the height I'm talking about in this rectangle is this height which is the uh, amount of or the flow of A at the beginning divided by the rate of reaction in that conversion and the base is the conversion now it is common that the student thinks the volume is the shaded area of under the curve so I, once again I got this and many people or students because they have seen I don't know mathematics or so they tell me that the volume should be this area right here and I tell you no that's not the case you need to do this it's more about the rectangle rather than the shaded area under the curve or the function uh, we're going to see that there is a special case for PFR which the student is right is actually the area under the curve but right now just let's stick to the algebraic calculation it's just a rectangle you have one height and you have one base which is actually conversion and the rate of reaction here and yeah uh, okay yeah once again it's a rectangle with a height and a base so I'm going to show you some examples for these let's say different shapes of rate of reaction the red mark area or these lines in theory it's an area but 
okay, yeah, maybe it's strange for you, is the volume of that CSTR tank or reactor. So I use 80% conversion in all cases. This line right here is the rate of reaction. How would you plot the rate of reaction? You cannot see this one here, but it's just a straight line here. And this one is increasing. So just imagine this is the rate of reaction or the inverse or one divided by the uh, rate of reaction. And what I'm telling you about guys is that the volume of that reactor will depend on the shape and where do you get it. So for example, I got this shape or this rate of reaction. I choose the 80% because this is my 80%. So I stick it here and see where I intersect with my rate of reaction and then make a horizontal line and I will get this this shaded area I don't know let's say it's 1.5 cubic meters will be the volume of that CSTR with that rate of reaction and that conversion the same thing goes here 80% is here then stick it here and do a horizontal line since the rate of reaction plot is already a horizontal line well it doesn't make any difference this is actually the only case in which the area under the function or under the curve is what is still in tall, the volume. And last but not least, as you can see, this one goes up and you choose the 80% here. So you drop it here and then you once again do a horizontal line. And all this will be your volume. Why I'm telling you these guys? Because probably you have no idea right now, but you're going to see that when you start calculating the bigger or the, the sometimes you calculate a volume of CSTR and you get lower volumes and you calculate it and you get high volumes and you will be asking or wondering yourself on what does that depend so this is the answer to that well once again the data of rate of reaction that is the shape of my plot we've seen it before, or going up, does not depend on the reactor. So once again, the rate of reaction does not depend on the reactor. So I could choose a PFR, I could choose a PBR, I could choose a, I don't know, a CSTR, any tank or any reactor I can imagine, and the rate of reaction is dependent on the reaction, not on the reactor. The good thing is that we can actually get one and apply it for any other reactor. So, yeah, once again, it applies for any reactor. And I think we're going to do this ex example in the other video. What's up, guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.